One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, Fournette. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, here for some week number four AAF Power Rankings. Now, before I dive into that, I want you guys to know that I will be on a little bit of a vacation from Saturday until Monday. Me and Bailey are going to be going somewhere on our five-year anniversary and i will be vlogging some stuff as well so hopefully you guys will enjoy that content but we're going back now to the aaf ladies and gentlemen and some of these games really caused me to have a difficult time ranking these teams in this week's power rankings and you guys might disagree with some of the spots on this list but that is what this is all about it's about debate ladies and gentlemen so this is troop talks week number four aaf power rankings Coming in at number 8, we have the Salt Lake Stallions taking a big dive three spots back. I was not impressed with this game, especially with the home field advantage. Now, I know it was snowing. You can use that excuse for both sides of the coin for both teams. But with the home team, you would think they would have a slight edge. But they lost by two possessions to the Orlando Apollos, a game that I said in my preview could be one of the upsets to happen this week, but the Apollos went out there and showed why they are no doubt one of the best, if not the best team in the AAF to extend their winning streak to four in a row to be the only undefeated team left in the alliance. Let's look at some numbers for the Stallions. Josh Woodrum threw for 161 yards. Their run game, as always, was stout. Brandon Oliver led with 71. Bogdanin with 30. Adonis Jennings led in receiving yards with 43 times 32. Kenny Bell, 2.5. Uh, this is the first game of the season that uh, Schultz didn't have a sack. There were no interceptions. Uh, Makai Hammerman led in tackles with 7. The overall numbers for Woodrum, he went 16 for 22, 72 completion percentage, 161 yards, no touchdowns, no picks. Now, you see those are good numbers. But he didn't throw a lot of yards. He didn't throw a touchdown. So the game manager side of Josh Woodrum really showed in a negative light. Because this is a game that you need Woodrum to be more than just a game manager. And unfortunately, he couldn't deliver on that level. When you're playing the best team in the league, you need to step up your play. And you need to be able to be more than what you actually are. And unfortunately, Woodrum couldn't do that. He maintained himself as a game manager manager unfortunately so though he had a good completion percentage no touchdowns and only throwing 171 yards on 16 completions that is just not going to be good enough to beat this apollos team uh rushing wise you know 17 carries for 71 yards so 4.2 yard average from brandon oliver the leading rusher bogan and eight for 30 and he got the rushing a touchdown so you know and the receiving numbers again were anything too special. The big thing for the Stallions is that they need to not play how they play against good teams. You know, their strategy that Dennis Erickson is doing with pounding the rock, chewing clock, winning the game by a couple of points because you just dominated the time of possession, that'll work, but it ain't going to work against an exciting, electrifying offense like the Orlando Apollos. They're going to eat that up, especially because you can't do anything offensively to begin with because his defense is shutting it down. So, the Apollos really exposed the Stallions, and unfortunately, that's why they come in at number 8 on Tree Talks' power ranking. Coming in at number 7, you're 1 in 3, Atlanta Legends. They got the job done against the Hot Shots in a big upset that fucked up a lot of people's picks and the pickums that I do. Uh, for YouTube, you know, in the contest, you know, no one thought Atlanta was going to come back, you know, they, they thought they were too stubborn to pull Matt Sims, they weren't going to put in Aaron Murray, but they did that, I believe, towards the end of the first quarter, maybe the beginning of the second quarter, Matt Sims only threw for 33 yards, but Aaron Murray showed you why the fans were shouting his name last week, he threw 254 yards, he also led in rushing yards with 54 of his own on the ground, Taron Folston led in receiving yards with 66. Uh, three sacks on the day for his Legends defense, something that uh, definitely improved this week. This defensive uh, game plan, this defensive team really, really stepped up 
uh, this week more so than they have in all the previous weeks. I remember last week when they played the Apollos, they just let them run all over them, didn't give them you know, any opportunity to win because his defense couldn't do much. But three sacks on a day, no interceptions. Ed Reynolds Jr. led in tackles with eight. So, actually, so Matt Sims went one for one, 100%, 33 yards. Uh, so, he must have, he got pulled early. So, 20 for 33 for Aaron Murray, 60 completion percentage, 250 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions, completion percentage in the yards helped out tremendously and the rushing game you know nothing really to speak about there um so you know Aaron Murray was able to get this job done he was a leader he didn't throw a touchdown pass but he definitely was a leader and this was a defensive battle from beginning to end it was basically like does any <laughs> does either one of these teams want to win because you know towards like the last six minutes it was like punt punt they're in the red zone didn't score. Red zone. Didn't score. You know, it was just, it was one of those games where the Legends were able to seal the deal and beat the Arizona Hot Shots, the team that was favored to win the championship by Vegas, and a team that I said was going to be the worst. So, they lost to the current worst team, so I think Troop Talks is just a little bit more right than Vegas. So, in that case, Atlanta, congratulations, you are no longer the bottom of the barrel. You are number seven in Troop Talks' power rankings. Coming in at number six and also moving up a spot thanks to them winning their first game of the season. We're talking about the Memphis Express. Went with Hackenberg too long, gave Mettenberger his full first start, and he didn't disappoint. He threw 174 yards, and his team also put up 26 points, which is impressive in this league, and they defeated the San Diego Fleet. Now, this was a game I told you guys that I think if the Express want to win and they're hot off of getting a new quarterback, it has to be against this Fleet team. This Fleet team has a good record, but aren't necessarily one of the better teams in the league. So if they wanted to turn it around, this was the week to do it, and they jumped on that opportunity. Unfortunately, I couldn't rank them any higher, basically because of the record, also because they were really, really conservative offensively. Zach Mattenberger only threw 174 yards. Zach Sasty led in rushing with 39. Reese Horn was the leading receiver with 63 yards. Corey Vereen, though, a defensive battle for uh, the Express in this game, though it was 23-26. Corey Vernon got two sacks. Latarius Brady got one, and Drew Jackson got one as well. Drew Jackson also added on an interception, and oh my god, Drew Jackson had one hell of a game. Had a sack, an interception, and an AAF season high 13 tackles. Drew Jackson was the MVP for this Express team at a tremendous defensive game as well. Just went out there and dominated. Overall passing stats for Mettenberger. He went 18 for 25, that's 72 completion, and 174 yards and a touchdown. You see now, if Josh Woodrum put up those numbers with the touchdown, maybe they would have had a better opportunity to beat the Apollos. You see Mettenberger, game manager, threw a touchdown. That's all you need to do. <laughs> you know, you just need to be able to score some points. Zach Menberger also put the team on his back there, scoring two touchdowns as well as notching a rushing touchdown to give him the second touchdown of the day. And you can't say enough about Drew Jackson's performance as well with the sack, interception, and 13 tackles, which is a uh, game high for anybody in the AAF so far. So the Memphis Express, though you guys have been the butt of a lot of jokes lately, you guys come in at number six, and you guys are slowly, slowly rising your way up. True Talks' power rankings. Coming in at number five, we have the Arizona Hot Shots, who are dropping two places on True Talks' power rankings. Rankings, like I said, this was a team that was favored to win it all at the beginning of the season, but after two back-to-back -back upset defeats after losing to the Stallions last week and this week losing to the Atlanta Legends. You know, that is a little shaky, a little shaky for this uh, for this Arizona team. You know, you hope that they get better in the long run because this is truly not a bad team. They just keep on losing to bad teams. So, John Wolford, 185 yards passing. Jarrell Presley, another impressive day on the ground with 110 yards. Rashad Ross has been the number one guy for this Hot Shots team all year. Had 74 yards. Carl Bradford with the sack. And Eric Dargan led in tackles with 11. Wolford's overall passing stats were not that impressive. He went 17 for 31, 185, no interceptions, and one touchdown to go with it. And for rushing, Jarrell Presley, 14 carries, 110 yards, 7.9, could not 
find the end zone, though, unfortunately. So basically the thing is with this Hot Shots team is they can't lose games like this. If they want to be contenders for the postseason and make a total run at the first AAF championship, they are going to need to not lose these type of games. You know, They need to go into the games that they're expected to win and win. They can't keep losing these upset games to teams that, you know, are making the switch at quarterback or that are, you know, feeling themselves, you know, getting hot. They need to win the games that they are supposed to win, and that is how they are going to boost their ranking on True Talks' power ranking. Coming in at number four, we have the San Diego Fleet. The Fleet come into this one at two and two, and I think that their loss against the Express, which is a tad bit, less embarrassing than that of the hot shots. Now they had two passers throwing the ball. Philip Nelson had 110 yards. Alex Ross with 80. The rushing yards, Terrell Watson led with 43 yards. Dantes Ford led receiving with 71. Miles Nash got a sack. Frank Guinden led in tackles with seven. So Nelson went nine for 12, 75% completion, 110 yards. Uh, no interceptions, one touchdown. For Alex Ross, he went 8 for 18. That's 44%. 80 yards, one interception, one touchdown. Jaquan Gardner, one of the most exciting backs in the league, got held to only nine carries for six yards. That is tremendous. Terrell Watson led in rushing overall, 10 carries for 43 yards. Now, this is a fleet team that I have not really been sold on all season long. I think they're a lot worse than what the record shows, and I know that they are 2-2 two and two now. So, you know, and you're probably thinking to yourself, why are they ranked so high? I mean, there's a lot of teams that pulled up upsets like the Express, Legends, etc. But, you know, you can't really rank them too high because, you know, 1-3, and three, you can't rank them over a team that has, you know, more victories. And the Hot Shots just come off of an embarrassing loss, two back-to-back -back embarrassing losses. So that's why the Fleet kind of rank where they are now. Now, hopefully, Philip Nelson isn't seriously injured. He can come back and play for this Fleet team because, you know, this Ross, this Ross guy doesn't look like he's going to be able to get it done for this Fleet and uh, will continue to plummet down the power rankings. But... The Fleet are a team I definitely was not impressed with this week, but was a little bit more impressed than the Hot Shots. And again, can't really rank any of the upset teams over a team that has a better record. So coming in at number four, not moving a spot, uh, maybe a little bit generous to this Fleet team, but you know they need to start winning games or else they're going to keep on moving down the power ranking. Coming in at number three, we have the San Antonio Commanders who take the biggest leap out of any team, plus three to the number three spot. We're in number six last week after a devastating loss. Now Logan Woodside again didn't really prove that he deserves to be the quarterback uh, for this team, but you know managed to game manage his way to a victory. 106 yards. This game wasn't. They were leading, uh, I believe. So the final score was 12 to 11. I believe they were leading 12 to 3 with about five minutes left. The Iron were almost about to come back. But the story offensively was not with Logan Woodside. The story was with Kenneth Farrow, who ran for 142 yards. And I might have to do some fact checking, but that might also be an AAF record. So big congratulations on that. Greg Ward led receiving with 24 yards. Jerome Elliott with a sack, Zach Sanchez with an interception, as well as Orion Stewart. The defense was hot uh, for the Stallions team. Deron Smith led in tackles with six. Woodside overall went 11 for 25, 44%, 106 yards, no interceptions, no touchdowns. That is ugly and definitely would be talking about benching the guy if they didn't come up with a big upset victory over one of the best teams in the league, the Birmingham Iron. So, <clears throat> you know, you got you to gotta take that in stride. You know, he was able to be the quarterback for when that happened, but... Uh, if he doesn't improve soon and they lose the game, you got to imagine Woodside might be seeing the bench. So we'll see how that goes. But Kenneth Farrell, like I said, was really the story of this game. They gave him the ball 30 times, 142 yards, 4.7 yard average, no touchdowns. Now, he was at the red zone. This was the tr this crazy thing. This iron defense is truly the iron curtain and is truly, truly impressive. Can't say enough nice things about this iron defense. The Commanders found themselves at the one-yard line. First and goal, didn't get it. Second goal, didn't get it. Third and goal, didn't get it. Pass interference, though, so they get another three downs to do it. First down, don't get it. Second down, don't get it. Third down, don't get it. They had to settle for a field goal, and that's really when you thought the tide was going to turn 
and the Iron were going to win this game. But I'm glad it didn't because the game that Farrell put together, this Commanders team, definitely deserved a victory and definitely uh, deserved to improve their spot on the list. And coming in at number two, I still have the Birmingham Iron. Though they lost to the Commanders in an upset fashion and they were at home, they still are 3-1 and one and, you know, better record than the Commanders. And they were still almost able to come back. They were so very close. They came down to an onside conversion. Couldn't get it. But they were so, so very close to winning this game. Luis Perez, 202 yards. Brandon Ross led in rushing with 64. West Saxon Jr. with receiving with 51. I mean, 54, excuse me. Uh, but Quinn's Brown got a sack. No interceptions. And Brown also led in tackles. Perez's overall stats, he went 19 for 39, one of his worst games, 48%, 202 yards, two interceptions, no touchdowns. This guy is still yet to throw a touchdown pass, and I still stand by this. I said it the other day. I tweeted it. Luis Perez is the most overrated player in this league. You know, if it wasn't for this iron defense, I'm pretty sure this team would not be where it was. Um, so the offense has to be counting their blessing. Putting that into perspective, Brandon Ross, a guy who was just a special teamer before this, led in rushing, 9 carries, 64 yards, 7.1 yard average. Uh, Trent Richardson struggled to get things going on the ground. He got 8 carries for only 15 yards. <laughs> now this iron team, like I said, are need to be counting their blessing because of how good their defense has really been over the last, you know, four weeks you know they've dominated they've done everything in their power to make sure that this team is capable of winning football games and that is why they are winning football games is because of their defense their defense single-handedly almost made it so this iron team could come back and win now this is going to be an interesting matchup next week you got the iron and the apollos you know will the iron hand them their first loss or will the apollos just continue their dominance and then they'll have a two-game lead on everybody else in the league. We will see. That's going to be probably the most entertaining matchup uh, of the week, at least for my money, and we will get to see what this iron defense is truly, truly all about because in this game, they almost did enough for them to win the game, but just not enough yet. And speaking of the Apollo, and coming in at number one, we have the Orlando Apollos, Garrett Gilbert again put together a good game, 244 yards through the air, Devon Smith led in rushing yards with 51, Charles Johnson, another guy that continues to improve, 105 yards this week, uh, Andrew Arnarqua got two sacks, Anthony Moten got a sack, and Earl O'Kine got a sack as well, Josh Evans, former Jacksonville Jaguar, led in tackles with five, overall stats for Gilbert went 22 for 32, that is a 68.8 completion, 244 yards, one touchdown, no pick. Basically exactly what you need to do in this league. Garrett Gilbert currently currently leading the MVP race. Akeem Hunt led in rushing eight carries, 35 yards, got himself a touchdown as well. Um, excuse me, no, Devon Smith did lead 12.51, no touchdown, but Akeem Hunt was able to get into the end zone. Uh, Charles Johnson, like I said, another guy continues to improve. Nine, nine receptions, 100 and five yards and as of right now no one is going to be able to stop the apollos unless you're maybe the birmingham iron it's going to be an interesting matchup next week and by the end of that matchup we might have a new overall number one team in the iron so you know that's basically right now that who's playing for number one in the power rankings will it be the apollos will it be the iron will the iron make sure the apollos fall for the first time because they've been number one since we've been doing these power rankings so will they fall to number one i mean will they fall to number two or will the iron capture the number one spot you're gonna have to find out for next week but as of right now and in that stallions game they proved way too much to handle garrett gilbert in this offense is tremendous steve spurrier is playing out there like he's playing with a bunch of elementary school kids he's just clowning everybody he's like he's like I'll beat you, I'll beat you, I'm going to go to the championship, I don't care if this league don't last long, I'm going to get myself an AAF ring. And that is what they are on pace to do. They have been dominant throughout four weeks, they beat the Stallions in a game that I said watch out and upset might happen, but they made sure it did not happen. And the Apollos remain as number one on Dream Talks' power ranking. 
And that was Tree Talks' week number four power rankings. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Tree Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Tree Talks or follow me on Instagram at Trey Von Pixley. Also, if you're feeling oh so generous, you can go ahead and donate on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Tree Talks. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Debs are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.